Heath Ledger is widely known for his portrayal of the Joker in 2008's The Dark Knight. His rendition has unanimous praise amongst critics and fans alike. While I love this performance and will break down aspects of why it's so incredible, the genius behind this awe-inspiring take on this iconic character, to this day, still feels underappreciated. We're talking about a guy who I believe showed glimpses of a rare hybrid actor. He had Johnny Depp-like charisma and Daniel Day-Lewis's deep respect for each character he brought to life. In my opinion, he is undoubtedly Hollywood's greatest what-if. There were many others who tragically passed before their time, such as James Dean, who captivated many adolescents in the East of Eden and Rebel Without a Cause. Then there's River Phoenix, who showed immense promise and star potential in Stand By Me and My Own Private Idaho. His sibling is one of the best actors alive today. Together, I think they could have had Skarsgård-esque box office success. And Sharon Tate, who had received a Golden Globe nomination for Most Promising Newcomer prior to her highly publicized death in 1969. Side note, I'm like 90% sure Tarantino heard about her obsession with walking around barefoot and said, Hey guys, I think I know my next movie. But unlike those tragic stories, no one showed the level of artistic disposition and humility that radiated from Heath. With about a decade of presence in Hollywood's limelight, Ledger has a healthy list of acting credits. I handpicked four films that I think showed Heath's malleability more than anything else he's acted in. Most people's first time seeing Ledger was when he played teen heartthrob in 10 Things I Hate About You. I gave it a second watch last night, and boy, some of the comedy, especially in the first act, doesn't age well at all. I still maintain that he kicked himself in the balls. The point is, Cat. Cat! <laughs> if it ended at Act 1, I would have projected the film to get a How Old Is This? rating. I thoroughly enjoyed the film's second and third act, though, which, not by coincidence, was the bulk of Ledger centric scenes. I'm not going to lie to you and say Heath reinvented the wheel with this performance. He relies heavily on his pretty boy looks and distinct smile. In fact, I think plenty of other actors could have executed this role competently. However, I think his interest in playing a heartthrob that acts like they don't care about companionship while seeking companionship is basically Ledger in a nutshell. Everyone who worked with him described him as a walking contradiction. He had a mild-mannered, reserved personality, yet had an electric energy. This film was a linchpin for his career in Hollywood, and I doubt we'd get nearly as many films from him without the early success of 10 Things I Hate About You. Unfortunately, this may have been a double-edged sword, because while it brought him acclaim, Ledger spent years vehemently trying to shake that pretty boy typecast. Up next, we have Monster's Ball. This film was on my watch list prior to doing research for this video. I wish I had watched it sooner. Admittedly, I was only intrigued by the film because there's a scene where Billy Bob Thornton and Holly Berry throw it down. And yeah, Thornton shows us why he had Angelina Jolie ovulating on the red carpet the year prior. You want me to be honest with you? We f***ed in the car on the way here. Yeah. And it was the most exciting thing. Uh, yeah, every time it is. Holly Berry was a huge standout and is still the only black woman to win Best Lead Actress in the history of the Oscars. Yet, the performance that stood out the most was Ledger's. In a supporting role with limited screen time, Heath excelled at showing us his magnetic screen presence and innate ability to give a loud performance in a finesse fashion. Spoiler warning if you haven't watched Monsters Ball and would like to see the movie, skip ahead 30 seconds. His character, Sonny, has a last scene in the film that is super effective and shows Heath go from a reserved guy who held his emotions under the surface to someone on the brink of implosion, fed up with life's unfairness and his family's deep-rooted racism and immorality. 
I believe this performance from him is the most underrated of his career. With as little experience as he had at that point, he had no right giving such a well-composed and intense performance like he did. These next couple of roles are by far his most well-known and recognized. Brokeback Mountain is a film so synonymous with queer cinema, even those who haven't watched it know exactly what a reference to the title means. Heath and his co-star, Jake Gyllenhaal, took an enormous risk taking on their respective roles. In the mid-2000s, people still unabashedly used gay slurs and a good portion of comedic punchlines at the time were openly homophobic. You know how I know that you're gay? Oh. You have a rainbow bumper sticker on your car that says, I love it when balls are in my face. That's gay? There's a world where this film completely flops and ruins the careers of everyone involved. Heath and Jake's unwavering commitment to their characters and Aang Lee's fearless and at times comedic direction was the perfect lightning in a bottle circumstance this film needed. I asked, I was like, how, what, how was that? How was that? You know, you, know, he, you, you liked the scene? And, and he just was nodding in a really awkward way. And he just said, so gay. <laughs> and, uh... Ledger, again, relied heavily on his finesse acting abilities in this role. However, much like Sonny in Monsters Ball, there's a palpable intensity that oozes off the screen. He also did a tremendous job not playing up to gay stereotypes. He wasn't overly emotive or animated like Heath is more than capable of displaying. His character simply seemed like a guy that, at face value, had a lot going on under the surface and spent all of his energy catering to his straight male facade. Him taking on the role would have been enough to make this a good movie, but his execution and attention to detail turned this film into a classic. And that's not including the monumental effect working on this film had on Heath's personal life. He met his future wife and the mother of his child while making this movie, with a love story that wouldn't get funded unless you were pitching to the Hallmark Channel. Michelle injured her knee on set and needed to go to the hospital. Heath refused to leave her side, and that sparked a fire from that point on. There's been plenty of speculation in years following about what role their relationship played in Heath's untimely demise. They split up four months prior to his death. There's some that believe his anxiety over potentially losing custody of his daughter due to his drug habit exacerbated an already overworked and sleep-deprived ledger, which I believe sounds much more plausible than some of the other theories. Many people to this day believe he took his method acting too seriously and it pushed him over the edge. While Heath did employ classic method acting, this has since been debunked. And unfortunately, I feel like the initial takeaway some actors gathered from the discourse was, I need to be in character 24-7, when in reality, there's numerous interviews with actors saying Heath would switch back to himself in between takes. The final role I'd like to discuss is his portrayal of the Joker. With a mere 33 minutes of screen time, Heath outclassed the likes of Christian Bale, Aaron Eckhart, Gary Oldman, and Michael Caine with pure ease. Caine famously forgot his lines since he was so startled by Heath. He concocted an antagonist so charismatic and unlike Heath's previous work, there are few performances in cinema history that should be mentioned in the same breath as this one. The unpredictability and yearning for pure chaos was unprecedented. The dramatic irony of the Joker switching up his backstory behind his facial scars is ingenious. The subtle humor, like brushing his hair back when approaching a woman yet again puts Heath's finesse skills on display. The Joker's voice is unlike anything we've heard from Heath and made the character infinitely more believable and iconic. Does it depress you, Commissioner, to know just how alone you really are? 
doesn't make you feel responsible for Harvey Dent's current predicament. Where is he? The constant lip licking honestly reminded me of a dog that knows his food is coming. Apparently Ledger did this because the prosthetic would come off, so he'd lick his lips to help hold it down. Still a pretty neat tick that adds depth to the character. There's the performance of a lifetime, and the man didn't even hit 30. If he lived long enough to take on the Joker again, well, I think he could have been great at fleshing out the character. I'm sure it probably would have bastardized it, since the lack of backstory adds to the mystique of the Joker. But the potential he had to take on other roles far outweighs the probability he'd put a dent in his best role. We saw what he was capable of when he worked with someone world class like Ang Lee or Christopher Nolan. Could you imagine what Heath could have done if he were utilized by the likes of Scorsese, Tarantino, Villeneuve, Fincher, Edgar Wright, or Spike Lee? His peers certainly thought highly of him, and I don't think it was just people being nice because of his death. A few of the most successful actors ever view Heath as the best they've ever seen. Really, I'm standing here on the, the shoulders um, of my favorite actor, uh, Heath Ledger. So thank you and good night. Then, of course, in Brokeback Mountain, he was unique, he was perfect. Um, and that, that scene in the trailer at the end of the film is as moving as anything that I think I've ever seen. Um, and I'd like to dedicate this to Heath Ledger. If Daniel Day-Lewis dedicates a large portion of his acceptance speech to you, you're probably a generational talent. We're in an age where the movie star doesn't exist in the same way they did before. But like LeBron James or Wayne Gretzky, his generational talent would allow him to thrive in whatever era you threw him in. I like Ryan Gosling and really love the visual aesthetic of Blade Runner 2049, but man, you can't tell me Heath wouldn't have knocked the role out of the park. His quiet intensity fits the mood of the film perfectly. I also see him excelling as the lead in Fincher's Gone Girl, or literally any character Tarantino would have tailor made for him. Films today are worse off without Heath's unique talent and deep passion for respecting his characters. I know we often rave about what he did provide us in his brief time on Earth. Nevertheless, I don't think we fully appreciated Heath's talent without discussing what could have been. Multiple Academy Award wins are certainly on the table, and another iconic performance or two was a strong possibility within the decade and a half since his passing. Honestly, I feel privileged to have seen him grace the silver screen, and those who haven't should envy me for it. Being completely mesmerized by a performance is an infrequent occasion for me. But of the few core memory theater experiences I have, seeing Ledger's Joker for the first time in a packed theater was one of them. It's unfortunate that today's silver screen can no longer provide a fully immersed, truly captivating, and wholly original performance given by the extraordinary mind of Heath Ledger. Thanks for watching. I loved making this video and would love some support making my next few. Comment topics you'd like to hear me discuss, like the video, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for the love. I'll see you next time. This is Just Alex Films. Adios.